Wins on back-to-back -back nights in different cities. It doesn't matter. The Oilers 4-2 victorious in Calgary at the Saddle Dome. Hello. Welcome to the Oil Stream post-game show right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Tom Gasola, YouTube Trev with you. Matt Cassie and our game analyst will be along shortly as we break it all down. The Oilers wrapping up the season series against the Calgary Flames with a 3-1 and one record. An interesting night at the Saddle Dome. A bunch of stuff going on. Ultimately, Edmonton picking up another couple of points, uh, putting down their provincial rivals, and uh, they did it in, uh, I, I'm not going to say, it wasn't con convincing fashion, but they did it calmly to a certain extent, but there are some uh, instances, instance, instances that we're going to talk about tonight as uh, we break this one down. Text us, as always, 780-218-9999, and... Uh, you could get into the nasty chat as I mock myself. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, the Oilers victorious 4-2. to two. Let's go into the scoring summary and the game stats from this one in the first period. His 40th goal of the season on the power play from Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Connor McDavid, the secondary assist, Leon Dreisaitl. Another 40-goal season. His fifth as an Oiler, and he joins uh, Yari Curry and... Wayne Gretzky, uh, as uh, guys that have done it, as of the top three 40-goal uh, scorers or 40-goal seasons in Oilers history. So Drysaddle right up there, that was his fifth 40-goal season and uh, counting because the Oilers do have six games remaining. So one nothing, Edmonton at 1944 of the first period to the second we go. Connor Brown, fourth of the season from Matthias Janmark and Derek Ryan going hard to the net, banging home the garbage. Good on Connor Brown. Looks like that confidence is starting to come around. That goal coming at 3.13 of the second, 2-0 Edmonton. However, shortly after less than a minute, it would be Yegor Sharangovich, his 30th of the year. The blast on the power play from Kuzmenko and Huberto. Dumb penalty taken by Evander Kane that led to the Sharangovich goal. We'll get into that a little bit more later on. In the third period, orders up. 2-1 to one until Nazem Kadri collects his 25th goal of the season on the power play as well from Sharon Govich and Kuzmenko. Huge season for Sharon Govich. Kuzmenko looks like he's starting to fit in really well in Calgary. Kadri continues to be one of the few bright spots for the Flames. 2-2 two -two at 7-13 until Evan Bouchard blasts home his 17th of the season on the power play from Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Connor McDavid. McDavid, 99 Assists on the year, 10.36 the time of that goal. It would hold up as the game winner, but before time was up, Nugent Hopkins into the empty net, his 18th of the season, three-point night for the Nuge to make it 4-2 to two at 19.17, and that's when we saw another EST hat on the broadcast. You nasties continue to be amazing. Absolutely love it, uh, representing EST proudly, and uh, we always appreciate that. 4 to 2 is your final shots on goal from this one. 36 27 in favor of the Calgary Flames. Face offs 54.4% to 44.6 in favor of the Edmonton Oilers. The power play 2 for 6. The PK 4 for 6. So coughed up a couple, obviously. Hits 17 12 in favor of the Flames. Block shots 17 16. In favor of the Oilers, nine giveaways officially for Calgary, seven for Edmonton. Both teams with 12 takeaways. So the Oilers, 4-2 winners. Give Edmonton another victory. Bring them a little bit closer to the Vancouver Canucks for top spot in the Pacific Division. Edmonton now just three points back of the Canucks, who lost to the LA Kings tonight. The Oilers on the cusp of another 100-point season. 47-24-5 uh, is Edmonton's record. 6-3-1 in the last 10. They've rattled off back-to-back -back wins, like we mentioned off the top. And overall, I think, you know, it wasn't the prettiest way to get to two points, um, somewhat calm with a few flare-ups, let's say, and uh, ultimately two points in the bank. Cash them as Edmonton uh, now has six games remaining and is on the cusp of another 50-win season, 100 points, and we'll see when McDavid hits 
uh, 100 assists as well. And so uh, just another fantastic year all around for the Oilers. We'll see if they can make some hay in the postseason. All right, let's get to the text line. Or, unless you want to hop in, Trev. Would you like to hop in? Okay, in a little bit. He's giving me the, yeah, in a sec, in a sec. All right, let's go. Let's go to the text line, 780-218-9999. I love it. Uh, Peter says, my take, Tommy, Nuge and Henrik don't seem to work. Last two games, they've struggled in the D zone, deciding who's playing center. Can have that confusing uh, confusion in the playoffs. That's from Peter, who also adds, also first in the division is up for grabs. Yeah, I don't really, when I watch Henrik and Nugent Hopkins together, Peter, I don't think of them as a natural combination. Um, I don't think it's particularly bad. I don't think it's over the top good or anything like that. It's just kind of ho-hum, kind of two similar players. And I think that there's better combinations out there. So, Peter, I'm with you on that one for sure. Mike in Thunder Bay still up. At a boy, Mike says, Oilers win, Canucks lose. This time next week, the Oilers could be playing the Canucks for first in the division. The Oilers could still end up playing the Knights in round one. These last few games are going to be exciting for every team in the Pacific. No position is secure. Mike in Thunder Bay. Let's go to Dirty Curdy. Dirty Curdy says, Pickard, star number one. Boosh with an elite offensive season. Brown best forward, snatching a W in a sloppy, undisciplined slash selfish affair. Three on one, two on zero, oh, and two breakaways, zero shots. About sums up this game. Two points out, or three points out of the Pacific Division lead somehow. Kane and the Worm getting fired up is a good thing. Kane needs to wake up. His puck plays have been trash. Hey Anderson, who's the pretender now? Good night, James. Fans from Dirty Curdy, who also says, "Bring up Hollywood ASAP." He's on the call up. Take Yanmark out. Uh, Dirty Curdy uh, also probably enjoying Matthias, or not Matthias Yanmark, Dylan Holloway picking up a hat trick against the Calgary Wranglers down in Bakersfield tonight. All right, one more text. Here we go as uh, we get set to welcome in Matt Cassian, who is standing by. This text says, hey, boys, are you getting concerned with Kane? I hate to read body language, but seem disinterested in the third, sitting on the end of the bench, away from his teammates, lack of effort in a close game. Didn't see him on the ice down the stretch. All right, uh, we will be talking about that with Matty Cassian. Keep those texts coming in, 780-218-9999. Of course, uh, get into the nasty chat, 4-2. The Oilers defeat the Calgary Flames, win the season series three games to one. And uh, that much closer to the Vancouver Canucks in the Pacific Division lead right now. The Canucks are three points up on Edmonton. Let's get him in here. He is our game analyst. It is Matt Cass. I was uh, actually just that me. was you. Just me. You're looking oh, at okay. Tommy. Sorry, he He's, still hasn't. He joined. is our My producer apologies. extraordinaire. He is YouTube Trevor. Hey, hey. All right, not you. quite, not quite Cass, but right. uh, yeah, man. What a what a what a good game! Uh, the, oh, yeah, okay. it was it was pretty solid. Like uh, the Flames, they 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 were coming in hot in the second period. Like uh, they were outshot, like doubled. Um, so it was nice. Uh, they weathered the storm, and it's it's little wins, right? You wanna you wanna start to figure out what works with this team. Really, it's crunch time. You know, they're they're heading into the playoffs now. So as far as the game goes, yeah, they won, but there there's still some question marks that they need to figure out. And I kind of think that's uh that's what Knobloch's going to be doing. So you you mentioned Holloway. Maybe does he get some ice time? I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did uh, coming down the stretch here. So it's uh, it was good. It, it's always good <laughs> taking on the Flames. I love it. And uh, I got some family watching right now, so shout out to them. So it's always pretty cool. But, nice. um, yeah, that, as far as uh, the line shuffles, like I, I think now you, you clinch playoffs, Tommy. So it's, it's, it's really just starting to figure out what this team is and what when it, it sucks that we're saying this at game, you know, 75, 76. But um, now you can really – you can – start answering those questions, mm -hmm. uh, change up the lineup maybe a little bit more. As far as the power play goes, uh, we, we talked about this a little bit uh, during the game, but um, it, it didn't look... And, and even Dusty, he tweeted it. He was like, wow, the Flames were whipping that puck around tonight. And uh, it, it's true. The Oilers definitely weren't doing that. So they need to figure some – there's still some things they need to polish up on. And uh, that's kind of what these games mean to me, uh, watching down the stretch. It's it's just the little victories and still figuring who they are as a team. Um, but, hey, they got another dub. Uh, if they want those – if they want to clinch there, if they want first in the Pacific, they're right there again. Yeah, so yeah. And they, they lose to uh, – 
uh, oh, damn, I'm drawing a blank. Who was uh, before Colorado? Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yeah. And and we're you know starting to say like ah no like it's it's Vancouver's uh, you know that they're probably going to win first in the Pacific. Well, now they're right there, three points, and uh, yeah, next uh, next week it's it's, it's going to be crazy to see what what comes down the stretch. So yeah. it's awesome. It was a pretty convincing win. I I, I liked what I saw uh, from the Oilers. Uh, they didn't back down, and the the Flames really brought it to them. They really did, and it was they were calm and composed. All night, Tommy. So there's a lot of little victories you can look at tonight. I thought it was awesome, and uh, yeah, it, it was sweet. Well said. Thanks, buddy. All right, thanks, you buddy. Too, Trev, very nice, very nice. Uh, first of all, shout out to Fergie who is off to bed. Fergie, have a great night, my friend. Fergie's prostate uh, in the nasty chat. There's a couple of uh, texts I want to get to in the nasty chat. Uh, some stranger says, "I still think Stetcher's better than Vincent DeHarnay." Did you notice? who was on the ice on the back end when they were holding on to that 3-2 lead. Matthias Ackholm with who, Trev? It was Vincent DeHarnay. It was Vincent DeHarnay. He's, he's winning the trust over from the coaches. Yeah. And uh, as far as, you know, defense, uh, you look at the numbers, he does have really good numbers uh, defensively. And as far as the eye test goes, right, he's, he's a big guy. He's the biggest defenseman. He's the biggest oiler in general, right? So he uses that reach, and I think that, yeah, that's kind of why. And... He's got the balls to to you know block some shots, and that's not a lot of not a lot of Oilers have been doing that really. Um, but you've seen it. He's 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 not afraid to to step in there. So I see why I see why they they pick Vinny to go in there, and uh, yeah, they, they he's won the he's won the uh, the coach's trust, yes. which which yeah, is yes. huge. Uh, Joel also staying up late. Audis. So, Joel, thank you for staying up late and joining us. As always, we appreciate you. The Nasties, you guys are fantastic. And again, I mentioned it, the uh, EST hat on the broadcast. You love to see it. I'm doing the Leonardo DiCaprio. Look at that. Hey, no, no dart in my mouth, but Trev and I were like, oh, super excited in uh, our lounge area watching as the Oilers uh, put a lid on the Flames in a 4-2 Victory. Keep those texts coming in. 780-218-9999. Nasty chat uh, going strong. And uh, let's bring him in. Matt Cassie, our game analyst for Rene Cheller. Edmonton 4-2 victors over the Calgary Flames. couple instances that uh, we want to get to, and I want to bounce off of Cass. Cass, your overall impression of the Oilers' victory tonight. Uh, two points, 99 on the year. And uh, McDavid, 99 assists on the air. They get the job done. Nobody looked like they got hurt outside of Hyman blocking a ricocheted shot. But what'd you think? Well, hopefully, hopefully Hyman, that's not like a break or anything. And it's something that'll be back well, right he away. Played, that's... Right. He didn't finish or he did finish. Pardon me. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you don't really know until you take the skate out of the boot. <laughs> like you, you don't with those ones. Uh, so we'll have to see on that. So jury's still out on it. Um, but you know, it wasn't an overly pretty win. I don't think they played horrible. It was a second game in back to back. Calgary played hard. They played, they they pushed uh and pushed pretty consistently through the night. So I mm -hmm. actually thought it was a decent job of hanging in there um uh, and finding a way to get two points in a game that you know you probably weren't at your best, but Calgary definitely was at their best. Yeah, trying to give it to the Oilers, trying to suck them into things. How do you think Edmonton managed to handle the the chippy stuff, uh, the after the whistle stuff, the Rasmus Anderson, Leon Dreisaitl thing? I think Dreisaitl, he didn't like the call. And yes, it was Anderson who initiated, but it was Dreisaitl who retaliated. And the ref saw it. I mean, he got busted for it. Sorry, that's the way it goes. That's usually how it is. But... Overall, cast the way the Oilers managed to push back on the Flames and the chippy stuff. Yeah, I mean, they they pushed back. You didn't want them to get overly involved in too much of it. For example, at the end of the game, Liam, uh, or Darnell Nurse, rather, just kind of stepping away from it, knowing that Calgary was going to push for something and just kind of saying, yeah, game's over, just just walk away. Right. Um, Leon still can't take that penalty. Like, I I get you want to get the guy back. Yes, it was a slash. Yes, it was a chop on you. But we've seen him do it a couple times where he's the retaliatory. Should that first one have been called? Absolutely. But yeah, it wasn't. Of course. Um, and he's got to get that out of his game in the playoffs because guys still are going to slash you. They're going to chop you. Refs might not call it. And you got to be able to deal with that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. you know, hey, overall, you know, they were a little chippy back. Yeah, they hung in there. Um they hung in there. 
They I'll just leave it with that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Matt Cassidy joining us. Now our game analyst orders for two winners over the Flames. Keep those texts coming in. I am watching the nasty chat and kind of chuckling to myself. You guys keep doing you. Fantastic, as always. And uh, Cass, just some of the players that you want to highlight for good reasons tonight from an Oilers standpoint. Yeah, let me pull this up here. Um I, I I thought penalty killers did a, a decent job again. Um, you know, you had a few penalty kills. Now you did give up the they one. Gave up I'm two just tonight. The goals or two tonight, I guess. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just pulling up all the goals again here. Um, well, uh, with one positive because it's always a positive. Connor Brown scored a goal. Um, so that's that's something. Uh, <laughs> that's something positive. Uh, Evan Bouchard again on the power play. Um, uh, you know, blasting the puck away. Power play looked okay tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, Tommy, there wasn't, I, I think, anyone that stood out in a fantastic manner. I mean, I guess you could say Matthias Janmark in his limited minutes um, found ways to be on the ice and produce. Uh, mm -hmm. Ends up being plus two on the night. So a decent night for him, for Connor Brown. Um, really, I guess your guy's kind of up and down the lineup. Um, one guy that has been poo-pooed on quite yes. strongly by a few that did have a night tonight, and I know... I know one of them was an empty netter, but ends up with three points in uh, in Ryan Nugent Hopkins. You know, played played a lot. Um, I actually think he played the most minutes out of anybody overall in the forward group tonight. And uh, yeah, hey, Confirmed. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has a good night. Um, gets three points, so get off his back already. A goal, two assists, plus one. Two shots, 22-51, time on ice, 37.5 percent on the dot the next closest was leon dry at 22 37 he was 52.9 percent on the dot dry the power play marker a plus one couple penalty minutes three shots and uh that was dry saddles night also uh collecting that goal on the power play okay Cass. Let's go to a couple of texts before I get into some other stuff that uh, we may have noticed. How about Calvin Pickard first? How about Calvin Pickard, by the way? That, yeah, solid night for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep, solid night for him. I just about gets beat early. Uh, could have been a totally different game. Calgary out of the gate quick with that Connor Zary chance off the uh, goal post. Another Cam Loose Blazer, by the way. Uh -huh. Just thought I'd throw that out there and mention it. Um, although, you know, he got scratched the other day. But, uh, but overall, really good year so far for Connor Zary. Um, yeah, no, Pickard, he, he stood in there. He did exactly, Tom, what he's done for the most part this year, which is just be solid. Like, just be solid. Not let anything really bad through you. So, um, Tommy, I have no complaints about Pickard. You know, I'm sure there's someone out there that's like, trade him now. But he had a solid <laughs> night. Made some good saves. Um, got a little bit bombarded at times over the course of the game when Edmonton was hemmed in their zone. And uh, he, he stood in there, Tommy. Yes, he did. Calvin Pickard picking up the win. And the Oilers uh, now move on to a three-game homestand. And uh, that doesn't get going until Wednesday night. All right, uh, let's go to three thoughts from Corpus Christi, Texas. Pickard was an absolute star, number one. Two, love the passion of Perry getting on Kane. That's number two. And great games by the Connors. That's number three from Colorado Rusty out of Corpus Christi. I want to get to this one from Eddie the Gambler. Hello, Eddie. First time caller, long time listener. A, why wasn't that a penalty on Shillington when he took out Henrique? The play was not completed to allow for an accidental ruling. B, how does Knobloch not have 97 out there for the empty net? He could have hit 100 and kept pace for the Art Ross. Sincerely, Eddie the Gambler. Cass, uh, after you. Well, you can't just keep a guy on the ice for an hour long, um, right? Like McDavid was out there, I think, right before, uh, if I recall correctly, he was on the ice right before that empty net. So, you you, you know, you're not trying to overly time it. I'm sure if McDavid was fresh, he would have got thrown out there. Mm -hmm. But you're still trying to win a hockey game at that point. Uh, you're only up a goal. So, yeah, it would have been good to throw him out maybe. But, you know, if the guy doesn't have legs at that point and is – you know, sucking wind, you're not just going to throw him out on the ice. Um, the Henrik one, I'd have to watch it again, Tommy. I'm trying to recall exactly what happened. Shillington, it was on the wall. Henrik was playing the puck. Shillington, I don't know, lost an edge and was kind of going down and then just took him up. I, at first, I was like, what the hell was that? 
And I think it confused a lot of people on the ice. And then Shillington went over and apologized to Henrique. I don't know. That was a weird one. Yeah. It would yeah, it be I'm inadvertent, to... like tripping. Even usually though it they don't wasn't call, Usually that's not. Usually yeah. they don't call those tripping. Like if it is truly completely accidental. Like if they you blow an that. edge. Yeah. Usually they don't call that. Right. Usually they don't call that. So maybe we should start practicing. Um, making it look feigning, like yeah. feigning, feigning, like feigning blowing a tire. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was Sniper falling. The stands. There's a guy in the stands. He hit me with something. Yeah. Something was on the ice. Um, no, usually they don't call those. Um, right. and, and really, why would you? I mean, I, it kind of defeats the purpose of tripping. Like if it is truly accidental and a guy it, just blows a tire, like he, his intention was to check Henrik, but he blows a tire, starts going down and then boom. Takes out Henrik's legs. I don't know. I understand. At first, I thought maybe that should have been a penalty. I saw it again. I thought, all right, I understand why it's not. But uh, Eddie, the gambler, brings up an interesting point. All right, let's go back to the inbox. Now, Jeff texting and says, completely undeserved win, but we'll take it. Only three back of the Canucks now. Oh, and good for the veteran and well-respected Corey Perry for putting... Mr. Pouty Pants of Vander Kane in his place <laughs> on the bench. He's the one to do that. All right. This is the instance I wanted to talk about. Yeah. And uh, this is a couple of times now where cameras have caught stuff involving a veteran player and Vander Kane. Cass, how do you interpret what we saw? Because on the broadcast, Kelly and Bieksa and, and the guys and Elliot were talking about you know, Perry's a competitor. He wanted to see Kane make a stronger play instead of a hope play to the, the front of the net on a backhand pass. And then he slammed the gate, goes away into the tunnel. Jeff Lang gets out of the way. Stuart Skinner's watching intently. Perry comes back, has a few more words. Kane just sits there. Then at the start of the third period, Glenn Gulletson, who's a glue guy from what we know and have experienced with Glenn Gulletson, is talking to both of them. Yeah, on the bench to start the period. You played in the NHL. You've seen stuff like this. How do you interpret what we witnessed tonight? Yeah, well, a couple things. Um, first, Gullitson in doing that is doing it so you're not calling attention to it in front of everybody. So you're not doing it because if you're doing it in the dressing room, you're doing it in front of everybody. Um, or you're pulling two guys out of the room and right. then everyone's like, well, what's going on here? So doing it right. on the bench, fewest eyes, fewest ears on it. Um, so if you're going to do it, that's actually probably the best time to do it because you know, you're not, you're not, you're not turning it into something bigger than it is. Now we might blow it up to be bigger than it is. Um, uh, fans might blow it up to be bigger than it is. Um, I do lean a little bit towards like yeah. Corey Perry is a fiery, emotional guy. We have seen it frequently over the last, however many years he's been around where he does get fired up now. Um, does he have the right to be frustrated if Evander Kane is just throwing hope plays and he doesn't like Evander, Kane, Evander Kane's game to um, have it out with him? Mm -hmm. I think he does. He's he's earned that at this point in his career. Now, you know, maybe goes down the hallway because he knows himself and he knows he needs a, a minute to just cool down for a second so right. it doesn't turn into something bigger than it needs to be. Um, and Evander Kane, I mean, it didn't look like he was shooting his mouth off, mouth off back. So he's just kind of sitting there and letting it happen. Um, so I kind of lean towards, it was a frustration in the moment. Um, now Evander Kane certainly has a reputation. Yes. That he has earned, um, of yes. at times in the past being difficult to deal with, with teammates. Um, that being said, I don't think he's scaring, intimidating or, anything like that, Corey Perry. So I don't know. I mean, it. I think I would have a bigger issue with, with the whole thing and maybe make a bigger deal out of it. If it was like one of the young guys, right. That, you know, someone that didn't, who hasn't been around for like 15 years, um, that isn't really, uh, I don't know. Solidified isn't the right word, but, um, confident in their career abilities in who they are as a player and as a person. Um, so I kind of go, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a huge deal, Tommy. Um, with that being said, it is the second time it's happened in a couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, so, you know, if, 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 and this is it, this is if, 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 
it is because there's friction behind the scenes. Glue guys like Gullitson and other glue guys in the room have to get that sorted out. And you want to get it sorted out before emotions ramp up in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before about my relationship with Joaquin Gage. Yeah, not everyone has to love each other in the dressing room. You just got to play for each other. Right. Right. You, you can you cannot like people, not get along with people, but you have to be able to control some of those emotions, control those frustrations, and still pull the cart in the same direction. So the glue guys, if if it is a bigger issue than just Corey Perry being frustrated on a play and wanting to win a hockey game, then I mean guys are gonna have to hash it out now sort through it now talk about it now get it done now just get it out of the way get it in the air and and figure it out and you know pad whoever's ego you need to uh because playoffs around the corner and you can't have any kind of rot in the room uh just remind everyone what your relationship with joaquin gage is right now oh i can't stand the guy yeah but we we have to do a podcast together. Usually you guys do a fantastic show agree. together on this. Well, fine we do station. a good job of pretending yes. that we get along. That's the that's the yeah. that's the trick because we yeah. just make it look like we enjoy hanging out together. Oh, job well done. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, when it comes to playoff time, you and Gager put everything aside and uh, do a great job on Tuesdays and Thursdays right here on EST. All right, keep those texts coming in seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Your thoughts on Cass's interpretation and thoughts on what we saw with Kane and Perry, as well as the game itself, Edmonton 99 points on the season as they get set to close things out. Six games remaining. Let's go to Shaggy in St. Albert. Ooh, a long one from Shaggy says another Oilers type effort. I'm using air quotes for those that are listening where they just try to give enough effort and skate by on their talent and to try and win. Flames outplayed them most of the night. Cass can say a win is a win, but they seem to do this on a regular basis. You guys say great teams lose to inferior teams and Avs lost to Columbus, but I give the Avs and Knights more slack because they actually won a cup. Oilers have not, but act like they have, even though they have not won anything. Once they actually win a cup, then they can sleepwalk through the regular season if they want. Dreisaitl, once again, with a selfish penalty that could have cost them. Kane upsetting another teammate. And what was that stat, Trev, you and I were looking at that Sportsnet threw up there in the first period? It was like the Oilers in their last 20 games were 13-4-4. Thir four and four. Yeah, it was 14, something crazy. It was, it was, it was something like that. Three. Yeah, yeah something it was like that. just a really good record. And I'm like, oh... We've been dumping on them. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we dumped on them the Dallas game, which was which fair. we had to. They're yeah, bad. To. They're brutal. You, you had to they dump stunk. on them that game. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was an Oilers type effort with the air quotations around that. Um, they've played a lot of hockey. It was back to back, and Calgary pushed and played very well. Mm. And, and sometimes in those games, in a back-to-back -back situation in Calgary's building, and there's extra incentive. There were a lot of Oilers fans there tonight. And oh, yeah. I, you know, be, playing in Ottawa, when you played Toronto and when you played Montreal, like half the building, and, and quite literally half the building was either Habs fans or Leafs fans. And and it was an extra motivation, and it made you hate those guys even more because it's like, oh, look at these guys and look at these fans, and we can't stand them. And they're in there, and you you have even more of a motivation, even more reason to try to win the hockey game and to push. And, Tom, it wasn't – was it pretty? No, it wasn't pretty. But it wasn't like they just kind of tried to skate by and get – through. like, I, I don't know. It just – I don't think it was a bad effort, Tom. It was adequate. It, it got the job done. But at no point in that game watching with Trev and our – EST Lounge, should I think to myself, they're in trouble. Not at one single point, even when they're I thought, well, getting scored I thought maybe, on. maybe like with the dry sidle penalty, like taking the unnecessary penalties, but not from a team play standpoint, but more from a, you're not putting yourself in a good position by, you know, dry sidle taking a penalty, sure, for example. Sure, yeah, okay. But even say, say uh, the Flames got the equalizer even when it was 3-2, or the Flames took the lead at some point when they were pouring it on in the, in the second period. I didn't think that the Oilers would have any qualms or, or uh, a tough time getting back into the game. And then they end up getting the go-ahead marker anyway, and they get the win. I, I just thought, I'm like, you know what? They seem like they're calm and in control, and whatever happens, they'll be able to handle that situation in the game. Yeah, and I think... 
I think today was an example of that where it was just like, yeah, Calgary's pressing. Sure. Sure. Okay. Bring it on. We're just, we're going to hang in there. And, and it was it, it, hang in there. Maybe that doesn't sound right, but we're just going to, we're just going to kind of keep doing our thing yep. and we're going to believe in ourselves. And if we do some of the things right, we're going to win this hockey game. And yes, Pickard had to be pretty good for it to happen, but mm -hmm. he really got some posts. faith in him right now. So yep. yeah. Timberwoodsman chiming in says, God, I hate the Flames. Anderson, so annoying. Pickard saved the game. Oilers almost got outplayed, but the Oilers' top end was way better. Let's go to this one from HB Sauce. Says, uh, if someone would have told me the Oilers would be in a playoffs for five straight seasons in 2014, I would tell them to take a hike. Vinny had a bad penalty tonight, but has been a solid player all year. If you don't see that, you are tripping. And why is everyone so negative? Edmonton clinched. They beat the Flames. Enjoy it, says HB Sauce. GJ on D says, I love the oil playing hard after the big win against the Avs. Nice to know I still hate the Flames. Pickard was stellar. LFG. Jibo. Thank you, Jibo or GJ on D. Let's go to Klima's Lid now. Klima's Lid texting in said, huge road win in the second of back-to-backs against a team that had nothing to play for. Solid start for Pickard and three points from Nugent Hopkins brings the Oilers within three points of the division lead. Who would have thought on November 10th? Uh, Klima's Lid, not me because I wrote them off. And I'm more than happy to eat my words because covering the playoffs is mm -hmm. a lot of fun and doing mm -hmm. this in the spring is way more fun than the doldrums of January and February. All right, Cass. Uh, <laughs> more people texting in about Kane and Perry, uh, Perry yelling at Kane. Daniel says, hey, Tommy, what's going on with Kane and Perry? Cass, you know what? We went over it a bit, but did, did you ever, let's just say this. Have you had experiences where guys would blow up on each other or there was one guy that seemed to be a lightning rod of attention for negative reasons and you guys were still able to work past it and it didn't hinder the overall performance of the team like can that be done basically yeah yeah it can i i think i mean an example i would go back uh, i'd go back to junior for an example of that and we were a pretty good team now we didn't win a win a championship um and I got traded the next year. Uh, thanks, Scott Bonner, right before the Memorial ah. Cup. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I kind of go back to a, a guy like Gilbert Brule, who, I mean, I got along with him great. We he's still good friends. Um, but good guy. Some yeah, he was really good guy. Yeah. But for some people, for whatever reason, they just they rubbed him the wrong way or. He rubbed them the wrong way. Okay. Um, I can't think of any massive yelling matches that he got into, but and it 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 is exactly that. It's like where you just you don't have to hang out with a guy. You don't have to go for dinner with them when when guys don't like each other. Um, now with the yelling stuff, most of that typically happens. You know, it either happens in a play like that where two guys are just really, really frustrated. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are friends too, but they're just <laughs> emotions spill over. It's an emotional game and you have emotional people and Sometimes guys raise their voices at each other. Most of it happened behind closed doors, at least, you know, for myself, if I had issues with anybody, <laughs> there's one, there's one guy once where he just, he was running his mouth and he was driving me nuts. And it was before, I mean, this was before a practice. Um, and I told him to stop, basically just shut his mouth. Did and I told him about him? five times. No, I did not. Um, I did not, but I gave him uh, I gave him a solid shove. Yep. Like I walked over there, I thought about punching him, and I just pushed him once, and like just like back against the locker. And then he sat down, and, and and I was ready to take a swing. And I think he realized because it was not someone that would have fared well in that instance. And in that moment, it was just like, oh crap! Like I guess I should have stopped. Mm -hmm. And the guy never never said a word to me again in in a way that he had been. <laughs> speaking to me so sometimes you got to deal with that with with those types of people um but yeah i mean it, again tom it's just it's just like having someone you don't get along with at work where there there could be instances sometimes where the emotions are a little bit higher yeah um now i think in a hockey rink in sports a lot of those emotions are intensified given the situation given the pressure given the nature of the game like they're they're intensified sure and sure, of course. and so it's just like 
chittering at a coworker and someone says something back and maybe not, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to say that it, it happens and it always happens on every team. At some point, there's going to be people that have issues. It's what you do after and how you deal with it after how you sort it out. And in a hockey team that glue people that are getting in between to calm the situation down. And again, just to make sure whether it's Gullitson, whether it's uh, McDavid, whether it's nurse, whoever it is, that is whether it's Vinny Deharnay for that matter, whether like it, it doesn't Cody CC, it doesn't matter who it is, but people have to be able to pull both guys along and to make sure that it's like, Hey man, are you good? Like we need to hash this right. out. We, we got to be on the same page here, figure this stuff out to both parties, regardless of who's at fault, because you're both ultimately you know playing for the same thing and on the same team. It is the Oil Stream post game show here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Tom Gazzola, Matt Cassie, and YouTube Trev with you. The Oilers, 4 2 winners over the Calgary Flames, give Edmonton 47 victories on the season. Back to back wins on back to back nights. And uh, it is a couple days of rest and some practice time before the Oilers back in action to kick off a four game homestand. Uh, with the Golden Knights on Wednesday. They get the Coyotes next Friday, the Canucks on Saturday, and then they wrap up that homestand and the home schedule Monday the 15th against the San Jose Sharks, who won tonight against St. Louis, and then uh, the season comes to its conclusion the 17th and 18th of the month in Arizona and Colorado. By the way, the 18th against the Avalanche, we will have our EST listener party at Hudson's white avenue so that's going to be a lot of fun looking forward to that those are always great and then we'll let you know what's going to happen for the playoffs and where we're going to be located those details to be hashed out in the next couple of days all right let's go to chris from fort max says hey tommy i noticed that they mentioned at the start of the game the Oilers got in at 1 a.m this morning i would have thought that they would have gone home slept and then traveled to calgary maybe early afternoon instead the boys Definitely looked like they were tired from a late night travel. Is there a reason they needed to leave to Calgary after the game last night against Colorado, like a league rule or something? Chris from Fort Mac, you nailed it at the end of your Great. text. Cass, yeah. go ahead. You you can explain it. Well, I mean, you, you, there are league rules, but really it wouldn't make sense to go home and to sleep and to fly the next day because by the time you get home, you eat, you you actually wind down and go to bed. You're not going to bed till 1 a.m. anyways. Yeah. And then you're having to fly the next day and and travel. Like it just, it it makes more sense just to just to do the trip. Yeah, and just to sleep in a little bit, get your nap in, not have a pregame skate. Like it, it, from a, from a mental clarity and energy standpoint, you you just want to get that trip out of the way. Yeah, and there is a league policy where teams are not supposed to travel on game days unless uh, something extreme or a circumstance pops up, weather stuff like that. Uh, where that's the only thing that they can do to play the game. So I do recall, I think the only exception, I believe, was Boxing Day. If there was a Boxing Day game, we used to have to go to like Calgary or Vancouver. But I think they've just nullified the Boxing Day game. So uh, we would hop on the train, or not the train, the plane, and then uh, go right to Vancouver or Calgary to play. And uh, that was the only exception to the league policy, not traveling on days of game. All right, let's go to West End. Rob says, boys, despite the goals tonight, power play one hasn't looked good for a while. Should they switch out Nugent Hopkins for someone else? Second line is awful. Is the fix to split up 97-29 or what other change? That's from West End. Rob, uh, on a night where power plays, uh, the Oilers get two on six opportunities. They give up two on six opportunities on the PK side of things. They rolled into tonight. They fell to third in the National Hockey League after going 0 for 5 yesterday. And, uh, Cass, I mean, I feel like they're probably saving a few plays and some set pieces for the postseason. That's just my assumption. Um, we've still got people not happy with the power play when it's clicking the way it is. What would you tell them? Yeah, um, you still got one of the best power plays in the league statistically. Like, I... <laughs> I, I get that there have been there have been a few times when predictability um, is there, right? Yeah, and, and we've talked about that where where it's been a little predictable. And you look like Colorado. I thought did a pretty good job against Edmonton's power play, pretty aggressive, um, and they managed to contain it. But 
Tommy, it's still one of the best power plays in the league. And yes, for some of the tweaks, you're just going to wait if you are going to run some different stuff right. in, until the um, until the playoffs start. But the reality is, is everyone's seen all the plays that you can run from that formation. It's just a matter of how often you're running specific certain ones. And if you're like, okay, well, we're going to you know kind of keep a few of these in our back pocket. And maybe not rely on them as much. Then we're gonna we're gonna wait for it. And you know, Tom and Trev, I mean, you just talked about the Oilers' record. You know, really the last twenty games been really good, and for the most part, the power play has been pretty solid. Again, the last week and a half, okay, there, there's been a couple games that hasn't been very good or hasn't been great. Uh, but Tommy, I'm not. When we when we talk about the Edmonton Oilers heading into playoffs, mm-hmm. one thing I'm not concerned about is the power play. Yeah. 780-218-9999. Text us. Edmonton 4, Calgary 2. That is the season series. Edmonton wins it 3-1 to one this year. And the Flames look to retool the Oilers getting set for a what they hope to be a long playoff run deep into the spring and even into the early parts of the summer. Uh, let's go to Ryan from Sask and then displaced you, Connor. And then I'll get Cass's thoughts with the break and then the four-game homestand coming up. Uh Ryan from Sass texting and says, Evening, fellas. That was ugly. I have to give the Flames credit. They pl- played hard, and they came to play. The young Russian players they've acquired in trades were impressive, especially the defensemen from Vegas. Oilers look tired and sloppy with the exception of Pickard and the fourth line. Good teams find a way. Ryan from Sask. I'm just trying to think. Who did the Flames have on the back end tonight that used to play for Vegas? Uh... I don't think anybody did. I don't think anybody. No, I think there's some homegrown talent there. Shillington returning from Sweden after some personal time away. Gilbert, I think, was in the system. Same with Pahal and Miramanov. And then Uyghur they got from Florida. But but um, good teams find a way, like Ryan from Sask said. And uh, Sharon Govich, a 30-goal season. That was a good pickup from New Jersey last year, I believe. Uh, okay. I want to get to this one, Cass, and it's right from Displaced You, Connor, who says, Cass says, Kane worn out as welcome. Perry seemed pretty pissed at him. We're not in the room, so we don't know. Good Again, point. I Good think point. it's easy to look at it to say there's two instances um, inside of the last couple of weeks where we've seen him have confrontation with players on the bench. There's way more confrontation between players that we just haven't seen. Not named Evander Kane. Sure. It just is going to mostly happen behind closed doors. So it's it's hard. It is really hard to say that without actually being in there on the day to day. It's it's hard to say. Well said. It is very very hard for us to say. There was a fight at Red Wings practice two weeks ago, and then that night the same two players were fighting for each other on the ice and yep. in the penalty box together. Like this stuff does happen, uh, but like Cass yep. said, as long as people are all pulling in the same direction when it comes down to crunch time, that's all that matters. They can put aside their differences. So uh, we'll leave that and park it for now right there. Cass, Edmonton now has a four-game homestand. Starts next Wednesday against the Golden Knights. They have three days between games here. They're probably going to take Sunday to rest and relax and then practice Monday, Tuesday. Uh, how does this Edmonton team go about these final six games and, and especially this homestand that starts with a very important game against the Golden Knights? Yeah, well, the Golden Knights game, that's going to be that's going to be a fun one. Um, you know, L.A. slides into that third spot tonight. Um, you know, I think <laughs> you're looking at this Edmonton going, who do you want to play in the first round a little bit? And And even if you're not thinking about it in that regard, you're thinking about it as, you know, we very well possible possibly are going to have to go through Vegas at some point in the playoffs, whether that is in the first round or it is in the second round. Um, you know, we're we're may have to beat these guys, and they knocked us out last year, and they're got a great team. And Tommy, I think you're looking at this game as you are looking at the rest of them, as you have been since you punched that playoff ticket of how are we going to prepare for the playoffs? Mm -hmm. How are we going to prepare for the playoffs? What habits can we just keep in place or build on to make sure that when the puck drops in playoffs, we are ready to go. And there's probably a part of you too, that's eyeing up the Vancouver Canucks to say, Hey, you know, we, we do have, we have a game against Vegas. We have a game against Vancouver coming up. Um, You know, we, we win a couple of these 
not only are we just going to continue to solidify ourselves at the top of the division, um, or or you know one of the is as one of the top two teams in the division, but we have a chance uh, to catch Vancouver and to finish first in the Pacific, which is you know as to your comment earlier about thinking they're out of it like in November. I mean, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, guilty, and I totally guilty myself as well. Um, but Tom, it's just if everything you do right now is about preparing for the playoffs, right. about playing the right way, building the right habits, and 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 making sure that you are ready to go. Cass, uh, you were ready to go from before the drop of the puck. Fantastic work on the pregame show. Even better stuff on the postgame. I know we had to get to those uh, fiery instances between Kane and Perry, and I think you handled it very well and then kind of gave us a peek behind the curtain of what goes on with an NHL team and uh, when things uh, can look a certain way but maybe aren't exactly what we uh, see them to be. So great work as always. I'll catch up with you next week, my friend. Sounds good, Tommy. That's our game analyst, Matt Cassian, breaking down the Oilers' 4-2 victory over the Calgary Flames at the Saddle Dome. Edmonton, 3-1 and one versus Calgary in the season series. Now the Oils set their sights on the Vegas Golden Knights, who are sitting in the first wild card spot with 92 points, tied with the Nashville Predators. The Preds have played one more game. L.A., at 93 points, sitting in third in the Pacific. Edmonton second at 99 points. The Canucks, 102. The Oilers and Canucks do play each other one more time, like Cass was talking about. And and Edmonton does still have a game in hand on the Vancouver Canucks. All right, I have to mention this. Portions of this hour brought to you by 100.3 The Bear, Edmonton's best rock. Check out Dusty. Every weekday morning with you and McCord, and then tune into Jess Jackson on your drive home from work. That is 100.3, the Bear, Edmonton's best rock. Trev, uh, anything you sing? Nasty chat. How's that going along? Looks like uh, yeah, nasty watching, chat is humming. Yeah. Um, I was I was pretty busy getting some post game interviews. Do you want to go to some post game? We interviews? do have them ready. Uh, right. We got Chris Noblick, uh, Calvin Pickard, and Derek Ryan. Is there a reason why you were giggling earlier? Oh, Cass, just a beauty. Oh, Cass. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. He, he he just chimes in on the nasty chat, and he'll is just he his, his one-liners in all caps. They kind of get me. Uh, <laughs> they really do. That's our boy. That's our boy, Matty Cassian. That's why we love him. All right, who's up first, pal? Yeah, let's, uh, he's been consistent all season long. Let's hear from the starting goalie tonight, Calvin Pickard. Ability to deal with the waves that were coming at you, especially in that second period against the Flames. Yeah, um, I thought we got off to a pretty good start. Yeah. Uh, first period was kind of even. Obviously, playing last night's a little bit tougher on us. Uh, we saw that with Colorado last night, and um, you know you got to give them credit. They were good. They were they played a lot. Uh, you know they played a lot of pucks towards the net, and and uh, kind of just retrieved them. And and uh, you know we kind of got spinning around there in the D zone a bit, but uh, we bent, but we didn't break. And um, you know we had the lead going to the third. And we played great in the third and shut it down. For you personally, how much are you enjoying getting all these reps in game action? Because we know how heavy the schedule is to close out the season, but that means they got to lean on you more and you continue to perform. How much are you enjoying this process? Yeah, it's been great. Um, I've been saying it all year. Anytime I'm called upon, I just want to go out and do my thing. And, um, you know, we didn't have a great game in Dallas, and, and today was another opportunity to get back at it just a couple days later. And, um, you know, obviously I want to have a good game, and, and uh, you know, I don't want to lose two in a row. So um, some really good efforts up and down the lineup today. Um, it was nice to get the win. I'll ask you the same question I asked Derek Ryan. When it comes to the character in this dressing room, what do you kind of highlight in your guys' ability to kind of bounce back after a very disappointing effort in Dallas? Yeah, um, obviously we have a boatload of character in this room. And, uh, you know, the last night's game was a big game for us. We wanted to have a big response after the Dallas game, and we did that. And, and uh, you know, obviously it's not the easiest schedule. It's back-to-back. -back. Calgary's sitting waiting for us. But, uh, you know, I thought we had some good looks. Their goalie played well, made some big saves. It could have, you know, we could add a couple more a couple more goals. So, um, you know, it was, it was a fun game to be a part of. Um, it's just nice to get the win for sure. What's on the to-do list or the checklist for your group from now until the start of the playoffs? Yeah, we just want to make sure, um, you know, we're playing the right way heading into the playoffs. Um, you know, obviously we sagged a bit in the second period today, but that's going to happen. And, and uh, you know, credit where credit's due. They played well. And, um, you know, looking after that Dallas game, 
you know, coming into a back-to-back, -back, that's not easy, and, and winning both is, is good for our group. Um, I think we have six games left, and we just want to get our game in order. It's about us in here and then not worrying about our opponents till playoffs. Have you been your first battle for Alberta uh, in the spot? Like, how was it, the atmosphere, the dome, and everything like that? That's great. Uh, you know, I thought it was rocking in the first period there. Obviously, uh, our fans travel travel over here, and there's a lot of other fans here, and um, that was nice to see. We got, uh, you know, best fans in the league and, and such good support all over. So um, that was fun, and uh, definitely nice to... Uh, uh, to bury them there at the end. Recent weeks have shown that the contributions from throughout the lineup has been very consistent. As a team that's hoping to contend for the Holy Grail come late June, seeing that now in early April, how encouraging of a sign is that? For sure. Uh, you said it. Up and down the lineup, first line, fourth line, all the D, um, you know, both goalies. It's, you're going you're gonna to need everybody. So um, it's very encouraging. Uh, it's exciting moving forward. And, and uh, obviously, it was a big night for us to clinch last night. But uh, we've got some unfinished business here for the next few games. We're obviously playing for seeding and, and uh, want that home ice. So um, it's an exciting time of the year. And, and uh, we're just going to try and keep playing well. 33 saves for Calvin Pickard tonight against the Calgary Flames. His 12th victory of the season improves to 12-6 and six in 20 games played this year. Edmonton's backup situation definitely solidified with Pickard behind Stuart Skinner. And that was Calvin Pickard's first victory in his career versus the Calgary Flames. 1-4 is his record in six appearances versus Calgary. All right, uh, fittingly, we're going to get to the... Big save of the game presented by Chris Boyle, business owner, tax saver. Chris Boyle strategically works with both businesses and families with strategic planning and risk management. Like a goalie, Calvin Pickard, protecting the net, shielding your paycheck from unforeseen events like illness or hospitalization and ensuring your family's financial stability in the face of unexpected circumstances. For a chance to win playoff tickets, playoffs... Scan the QR code in the corner of your screen or visit ChristopherBoyle.net slash postgame show to enter to win. Uh, which way are we pointing? Uh, that right down there. There it is. That QR code over there in the bottom of your screen if you're watching. Scan it to enter to win playoff tickets. And then if you're listening to us, whether it's on iHeartRadio, TuneIn, or our Edmonton uh, SportsTalk.com website, and uh, live radio stream, uh, you can go to ChristopherBoyle.net slash postgame show to get in on those tickets. Uh, without further ado, YouTube Trev, the big save of the game. Thank you for that, Tommy. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so obviously it's going to Calvin Pickard. There was, uh, it was in the second period. There's a lot of saves to pick from. Um, and there's a whole cluster of saves. Of 33, yeah. So it was just a solid night from him, but uh, there there wasn't any crazy, crazy miraculous saves. Um, Fair point. There was, but there was like three saves in the middle of the, the second period. Martin Pospisil, he was uh, middle of like just right, wide open in the slot. Um, it was not one, not two, and it was like three saves he made, and they were all pretty good saves. So uh, solid saves, big save, if you will, and it's uh, obviously going to Calvin Pickard, who robbed. Martin Pos Pospisil. So, Pospisil, yeah. I'd be uh, I'd be Calvert on the Calvin on those ones. Uh, yeah, good job, big save. Twelfth win of the season, <laughs> nicely done. Uh, last chance to scan the QR code to enter to win playoff tickets. The playoffs, you know Herm Edwards? Or are you too young for that one? Nope. You don't know that one? No, no. It comes up all the time on like the uh, countdown shows and the highlight shows. It was when he was coaching the Indianapolis Colts and they were struggling, and he. Was asked the question. Oh, the playoffs. He goes, playoffs. Playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Playoffs. We're, yeah, okay. I know. All the owners are going that. to the playoffs. So uh, scan you. the QR code or you can visit ChristopherBoyle.net slash postgame show to get in to win some playoff tickets. Okay, let's go to the text line a couple of times and then we're going to go back inside the Oilers locker room down in Calgary and then we have to get to the player of the game. You can keep those texts coming in. 780-218-9999 and nasty chat. Uh, nasty chat doing nasty chat things over there. Uh, Emma Terry says, Tommy, bring me to a game. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. I wish I could bring everybody to a game. I really do, sincerely. KL Texan says, hey, boys, that was an entertaining game. 
game. I know you guys said yesterday they are doing their job, but as a second line, I feel like they should have more ozone time. I feel like dry sidle on the first line really hampers them. The third line is almost their second line with how they have been playing recently. I'm concerned with dry sidle taking undisciplined penalties in the playoffs. It is getting to be an issue. KL, I understand all of those concerns. I personally have faith in them reining it in come game 83. This team has been through the postseason. They know that that kind of stuff doesn't fly. You, you don't get away with it in the playoffs. There is there's a fine line you can walk. I know that the games are tougher, but uh, just absolute blatant retaliation whacks at the back of guys' legs uh, right in front of the refs will definitely be called in the postseason. As for the second and third lines, I'd, the lines that we're seeing right now, I'm pretty sure that they're not going to be the same by the time we get to the play. There's six games remaining. We're probably going to be talking about a different line combination on Wednesday night, to be honest with you. So some tinkering there. I, I don't know the method of Chris Knobloch's madness. Still trying to figure that out, but uh, he's been playing around with it. So KL, I feel like it will tell in some time. I, I would like to see Leon Dreisaitl centering the second line. Give him some wingers, give him some speed, Fogel, whatever. Um, but I'd like to see balance. I like balance. I like throwing different types of lines at the opposition. But I'm not an NHL coach, nor will I ever be. And I'm not an NHL GM, nor will I ever be. I'm just saying. I don't know. What I you think you, you've got a great mind. You've got a great mind, Tommy. Bless you. That's why. That's we pay why you I, to say that. No, that, that's why a lot of the nasties they they come here to see hear what you have to say. So, including myself. That's really? Like, Do yeah. you mean it? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Trevor. I was a fan of yours. I still am. Still am. Yeah. But you like Pat Steinberg more. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm messing with you. Patty was on the pregame show. Great stuff. All right, a couple more texts, and then let's go back inside the Oilers locker room in Calgary. They win it 4-2 tonight. Why do you think Knobloch changed up the lines in the third? The Pacific crown is still up for grabs. Let's go. Coach Mike with that text. Um, yeah, it was interesting because he had Nugent Hopkins up with Hyman and McDavid, and then I think he switched it back to Dreisaitl. Um I don't know. I really, I can't, was it penalties? No. Yeah, just looking for a different. Maybe trying like, something. You, you can't really, like, I understand the frustration, but, like, you can't really fault Chris Knobloch. Like, nothing's really clicked. And so, if nothing's clicking, you're going to keep they're shuffling. winning. And, and see, and that's the thing. 15 you're, wins in their last 21 games. Yeah, and, like, that's the thing. Like, it's it's working, so you keep doing what he's doing. I don't know, but it, it seems like that's the strategy. Like, he's like, we can question hey, it, let's it just to work. keep changing the lines throughout the game. Yeah. Maybe it throws off the opposition. Is that what he's done? Maybe he's done Possibly. it in the past. Maybe he was trying to get away from a certain matchup that he yeah. noticed that Ryan Huska was, was trying to get out there with the last change. That could be it, too. It worked. This text says, I wish to have seen Perry show Kane a little love after ripping him a new one like that. Um, I understand that sentiment. I will say that they're two veteran NHLers um, and they're big boys, so they can they can deal with it amongst themselves. Uh, Tim texts and says, sorry, but Fogel and McLeod do nothing for me. Surely Holloway brings more to the table over one of them. Tim, uh, Holloway, the hat trick tonight against the Calgary Wranglers down in Bakersfield. And uh, you know what? Dylan Holloway will have an impact on this team, a bigger one as he gets older and more mature, gains some trust with the coaching staff, gets that experience. Uh, I disagree, Tim, that he would bring more to the table than Warren Fogle or Ryan McLeod, who both are having decent offensive seasons. McLeod at 28 points. And Fogel having a career year, 17 goals, 37 points. Uh, yeah, I, it, Holloway's not there yet. I'm sorry, Tim, I disagree with you. But I do think he will get there in a couple of years. All right, let's go back inside the Oilers locker room. Who's next, big boy? Let's, uh, let's hear from Doc, the other Doc, Derek Ryan, they call him. Let's go to him now ability to kind of deal with the pushback you were getting from Calgary and still come out on top of it? Yeah, I don't think we're happy with our second. They took it to us a little bit. Um, that's what happens in big games. Uh, a lot of momentum swings, ebbs and flows, and we were able to come out and 
have a really good third. I was happy about that and uh, regroup and found two points. When it comes to the character in this dressing room, what's been highlighted in your team's ability to bounce back after a very disappointing effort in Dallas? Yeah, I mean, that's a microcosm of our whole season, no, with the start that we had and the character in this room, we were able to bounce back from that. There's a lot of people in Edmonton, a lot of people standing around me right now. They were writing us off and, and look at us now, so. <clears throat> motivation what we say Derek or uh, no <laughs> <laughs> leave it at that <laughs> you, when you get to the playoffs in the big games it can't be just the top line scoring and the top guys it's got to be everybody last two games you're getting goals from everybody is this a, a team building towards the recipe that it's going to take to win when it counts um, yeah you know what bring what comes to mind when I when you say that is everyone wants to talk about goal scoring and um, I think that the third and fourth line have to do a good job of a lot of other things that aren't that don't go on the score sheet. I know that you guys look at the score sheet and you want to see that, but I mean, if the fourth line goes out and draws a penalty and they, we score on that power play, it doesn't go on the score sheet. That happened in the third, and uh, you guys don't talk about that, but that's a big shift. Whether it's building momentum in the ozone, those shifts are just huge in the playoffs. The moment, moment, momentum shifts are massive. And so, yeah, we need to score goals, but it's a lot more complicated than that. Ooh, Whoa. spicy Derek Ryan taking Whoa. shots at everybody in the media. You were nodding there. You're like, yeah. I like it. I love it. He's talking about Lots you specifically. Yeah. No, it's good. Like, there, there's stuff... Uh, how many times do you see your fourth line, third line draw penalties, right? They, they're they not going to be on the, the power play, right? Mm -hmm. that, that happens a lot. So, yeah, like Odie alluded to, um, they're doing little things uh, which lead to goals. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. Good experience, guy. I love Derek Ryan. If I want to take a clap back at Derek Ryan, what are you doing? Just validating the second year of your contract, huh? I'm kidding. I take that back. That was a joke. He uh, he played very well tonight and has been a solid veteran for this team for a few years now. There's a reason why they gave him a multi-year deal. Also, shout out to Klima's lid, who pointed out that it was not Herm Edwards who did playoff. Playoffs. That was Jim Mora. Thank you. Uh, Herm Edwards was, you play to win the game. I believe it was. So I got those two crossed up. Thank you, Klima's lid. All right. Do we have any more audio to get to? Yes, we do. Okay, who's up? Let's go to, last but not least, let's go to Chris Knobloch. Beautiful. Tonight that allowed you guys to come out with a 4-2-1. Um, our third period. I thought we played well in the third period, and the power play came up with a huge goal at the end. Um, I did like that. And the other one would be um, Calvin Pickard. He was outstanding. Um, I thought he made a huge save, especially late in the game uh, with the goal he pulled. Uh, game on the line. He came up big, and, um, you know, if, so often you win some games with the goaltending, and I think tonight was one of those. Uh, what, was, what was the difference between tonight and the last time these two teams played? Well, I, um, I, I think um, just the opportunity to score. I think we were just opportunistic. Um, now, saying that, we, we had some really good opportunities. We didn't get a shot on goal, a couple breakaways, 2-1-0. Um, but, um, you know, sometimes they, they go your way, sometimes they don't. Uh, um, you know, tonight I think the difference was, I, I just, again, I'll say Picker, how well he played. I know the bottom six has been doing their job on both ends of the ice, but their offensive production has now been a little bit more consistent. How encouraging of a sign is that as a head coach of a team that hopes to go far in the playoffs to have that starting early April? Yeah, it's nice that we're getting some depth scoring. And, um, you know, last night it was uh, Kane, Perry McLeod line who came up big with three goals uh, tonight uh, Brown the huge goal and um, you know those lines have been playing pretty good especially that uh, fourth line who had, probably haven't uh, scored as much as obviously the other lines but that obviously ice time and opportunities um, affect that but overall the amount of time they've been spending in the offensive zone generating chances and not giving up much they, they've been uh, very solid. You've been juggling these lines here for about a month. Do you finally feel like you got a couple lines down there that are getting some traction? Well, that fourth line's been really good. And, um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, Sam Kerr can go in that fourth line and mix up that line too. So um, tonight it got messed up because, you know, something had to be done. We weren't very good in the second period and uh, we had to make a little adjustment, uh, kind of spread out our um, our talent um, split up a 
Connor and um, Leon there. But um, yeah, I, I like overall. There's lines that I like, and when we go from game to game, there'll be some um, fluctuation. There was a, a heat exchange there between Perry and Kane on the bench, really animated. I guess did you see that? Uh, and then we have to say when teammates are kind of going at it on the bench there. Um, emotional. Um, I know before the period started, they had talked and made it out. They're just. A disagreement and um, two passionate players and, and nothing more than that. In a weird way, do you kind of want that from your team, like that type of fire internal conflict? If it's handled the right, if it's handled right, it's if it's handled well. And uh, but obviously, if um, the most important is, do they stay composed? Um, our focus, I should say, the more important word would be focus and being able to return from that exchange ready for their next shift. And if they have that exchange and it affects others on the bench, if it affects uh, uh, their next shift, then absolutely, we don't want to see that. Um, but, um, you know, these players are very competitive and they have uh, emotions and sometimes that comes out. But um, overall, I, I don't assume it's going to happen um, again. Okay, so there's Chris Knobloch uh, shining a light on that situation between Corey Perry and Evander Kane. Nice to to get a little bit of perspective on it. Uh, shout out to Solomon Valji from TSN for asking those questions. Nicely done. Obviously, he's on the Flames beat, and uh, he he asked them. So, uh, the composure, collecting themselves after, uh, handling it like professionals. Okay in Chris Knobloch's books, says in that situation it was handled that way, so he's okay with it. If it did, you know, permeate and affect the team uh, in the third period, let's say, or continued on after uh, that that little instant um, instance, I should say, then an issue. So at least he addressed that. Uh, the other thing, too, consistency with the lines. He goes and he says, well, the fourth line's been consistent. That. I mean, that's kind of a, a misdirection there, but truthful in, in the same vein. And then, as to why he switched things up in the third period, he wanted that balance I kind of talked about, which was my guess, or what I like to see personally. And uh, he split up Dreisaitl and McDavid. Had Dreisaitl back at center. Nugent Hopkins moves up to the line with Hyman and McDavid. So kind of hit on a bunch of stuff that we were wondering about. Good to hear him talk about that all right let's get to a couple more texts then we have to get to the player of the game uh hydro texting in says a lot of fans have 10 percent of the confidence the players do i wasn't worried about six bad minutes against a good team in dallas with four days of rest they toyed with the flames they are conserving energy for the playoffs uh, sean said dr channeling his inner coach uh, Tortorella, LFG, I bet he was staring at uh, a few certain reporters as he was saying what he said. Yeah, whatever it is, what it is. You're not going to be everybody's best friend, and uh, it's the nature of the business. This one says, both flame goals, who was out on defense? Nurse, and he isn't worth the cost. Yes, we've heard that many times. This one from Jimbo says, let's focus on the positives. A win over Calgary team freshly eliminated from playoff contention. Jimbo, good point. Another one uh, was saying, Flames got Miramanov from Vegas. No, Library Pat in the Hannafin trade. I missed that. And thank you for correcting me. I apologize too. I can't remember who it was that texted in earlier. Was it KL? Or someone else. My bad. I screwed up. I screwed up the Jim Mora thing. Uh, I screwed up the word instance. And I screwed up that one. And I apologize. I need to atone. I will repent. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next order of business. It is the Damon Bunting Remax Elite Player of the Game. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among Western Canadian Remax realtors. He and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. He's community driven, understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. So check him out, damonbunting.com, or visit his Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate. YouTube Trev, take it away. Awesome. Thank you for that, Tommy. Uh, yeah, I could have went a few ways with this one. Um, obviously, Calvin Pickard had a phenomenal night in net, 
and uh, honorable mention to him. But uh, I'm, I'm going to give it to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. I can't remember the last time that I gave it to Nuge. Was it a quiet game for him? Yeah, it was. But there was a lot of things that I liked from his game tonight. And he did chip in with three points. Look, he's been getting a lot of hate lately. And I just want to preface this. Uh, you're paying Ryan Nugent Hopkins 5.125 mil uh, for you know a few more years to come as well. And he's got 64 points on the season. Uh, and just to put that in perspective, you got a guy in Calgary who we didn't really notice uh, at all tonight, and Jonathan Huberto, who is getting paid $10.5 million. So, And how many points does he have? 48 points. So Nugent Hopkins has 16 more points than a $10.5 million player, and that's significant value. So Nugent Hopkins, I, I kind of went on a rant in a few post games ago just saying there's just all the little things that he does. And it's just, he's, he's a glue guy. He can chip in offensively. Defensively, he's just so sound. And you're going to need a guy like Nugent Hopkins. Any, any player in the NHL or any team in the NHL would love to have a player like Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Yes, that's true. And, like, it's, it's just, yeah. He, like I said, he had an unbelievable year last year. Is he a 100-point player? No. You got to, like, he's on pace for having, if it wasn't for last year, this would be his best season to, statistically. So, it's it's honestly just so impressive what he's been able to do, and he could be the first Oiler uh, to be drafted and finish his career as an Oiler. So it's, without it's going so, to the New York Rangers, right. like Kevin Lowe did, right? right. Absolutely. So um, absolutely, I, it, it was a quiet, quiet three point game for him, but uh, he got three points again. You know, just a, a solid performance from him, uh, and just just watch him. There's so many little things that he does. So I'll leave it at that. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, you're the player of the game. Out of B. Nicely done. Machine Gun Yanmark says, "Well said." Trev, I agree. I agree. And also, Ryan Smith bounced around a bit before he returned to Oil Country to wind down his career in fitting fashion. Uh, Snars Attack says, Nuge is huge. And uh, Mike says, Yep, Nugent is a life oiler, I hope. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Nicely done. That was the player of the game brought to you by Damon Bunting, Remax Elite. All right. A few more texts. We're ready. Oh, my goodness. We're past midnight. We're into Sunday. It's supposed to be a day of rest. No games for the next few days. The Oilers, uh, we got a text from the PR staff said, Oilers off. Hallelujah. Looking forward to a lovely little Sunday. It's Eva G's early birthday celebration because the whole fam damley's in town. How to be? It's my birthday next weekend. Sweetheart. Absolute sweetheart. Yeah. A happy early birthday. Thank you. She appreciates that. Thank you, YouTube Trev. I like you. Yeah. You met her, didn't you? Yeah, she wanted yeah, to meet yeah. you. Yeah, yeah just uh, yeah. what a uh, just phenomenal lady. She's so a little happy early birthday. that one, I tell <laughs> you what. All right, let's go to Z. He says, Miramanov came from Vegas in the Hannafin trade. Yes, Z, I was wrong. I apologize. Uh... <laughs> Atone and repent. Wait for Torts to do it first. That's from Mabutsky. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm taking some humble pie here. Um, all right, let's go to this last text. says, really tired of the Kane narrative. Why didn't Perry flip out at Leon for the selfish penalty? Manhood says you don't lose it on a coworker in public. I don't have the answer to those. Obviously, something boiled over. Chris Knobloch says they handled it properly like two veteran professionals and... Uh, from an Oilers standpoint, from the fan base's standpoint, you hope you don't see it again. Time will tell. Six regular season games remain. Edmonton in a sweet, juicy spot. Three points back of the Vancouver Canucks after picking up win number 47 on the season. Six games remain. Edmonton 6-3-1 and one in its last 10. 15 victories in the last 21 games. Yes, they've had some ugly losses. I certainly think of what we saw on Wednesday against Dallas, and I certainly think of what we saw two weeks ago in Ottawa and Toronto, but this team's rolling, and uh, they've been consistent. Can they rise to the occasion in the postseason? We shall see, but we've got a couple weeks to go. That is going to do it for the Oil Stream post game show on this fine station. Shout out to the Oiler fan in the EST hat behind the bench. I think Dusty put his name in the uh, nasty chat earlier, and uh, we appreciate that. Love to see it on a national broadcast. You nasties are the best. The best for YouTube, Trev and Matty Cassian. I'm Tom Gazzola. Say, keeping me honest is the best. I appreciate that as well. Thank you for doing it tonight and always. Enjoy your Sunday. Talk to you on Monday. Ciao.